look at uh, Media Watch with Diptyka Laurent, taking a look at what's turning online. Obviously, we're looking at Francois Hollande's surprise announcement not to stand for re-election. That's right, Will. He's essentially a lame duck for the next five months, and Twitter is reacting with quite a bit of humor. This user says it was a real mic drop moment. Uh, Hollande's face is uh, superimposed with Barack Obama's face in this picture. Uh, surf, uh, this, another user called Scarface Cartel notes the irony, saying Hollande, Obama, and David Cameron were all calling for Bashar al-Assad to leave, and yet the Syrian president has actually uh, politically outlived them. That's this tweet here. Uh, while there's a great tribute uh, photo mock-up of Hollande, uh, <laughs> This user has had a lot of fun today. His Hollande's face superimposed onto the faces of a number of celebrities. Now, there's been a lot of chatter as well about uh, Francois Hollande's right-hand man, the Prime Minister Emmanuel Valls. That's right. The burning question is, will he stand to be uh, stand for candidacy for the Socialist Party in, in next year's presidential elections? Well, Kaiser Soze has likened the situation to this iconic scene from the French film La Haine, where, uh, uh, where the character is looking at himself in the mirror saying, uh, who's the boss? I'm the boss. So this user thinks that's what Manuel Valls did this morning. While uh, Huffington Post says, well, Manuel Valls actually changed his telephone number and they announced it to journalists around 8 o'clock on Thursday, just about the same time when Hollande was making his speech. So is that a sign? Is he preparing to resign and stand for the presidential elections? Apparently that could be a clue. Now, a poll came out this Friday saying French voters actually do want Valls to be their Socialist Party candidate. Uh, he, came in, he came in well ahead of the other uh, major candidate, uh, Arnaud Montbourg. But for many users on Twitter, it's, um, it's out of the question. We've been seeing a lot of these kind of images flooding Twitter about Valls' possible candidacy. At least no one had their hand chopped off, though, <laughs> if I remember that movie correctly. That wasn't the only pol political shock. We also saw one coming out of Gambia with a uh, longtime leader, Yaya Jame losing the presidential election. And Gambians are thrilled about it, Will. Uh, a lot of tweets celebrating not just Adama Barrow's victory, but also the imminent departure of Yaya Jame. Let's look at this tweet from Jeffrey Smith. He says, Yaya Jame banned protests. He did not ban victory celebrations. We have won. Gambia has won. We're really seeing this kind of sentiment that it's a victory for Gambia. This uh, user says, overwhelming em emotions. Jamme brought a lot of pain to Gambians, but we'll deal with him later. That echoing uh, many of the calls from the opposition that Jamme should be jailed. While another user sees uh, Barrow's victory as a, as a new dawn, the heralding of a new dawn, a new revolution, a new independence, uh, likening it to what this person thinks uh, grandparents felt uh, when Gambia gained independence. Finally, this user, I think, put it pretty well. Some surprises in 2016 don't suck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, in the UK, another scandal, but perhaps on a lesser scale than some of these scandals from 2016, the UK has decided to change its five-pound note. That's right, and it's, it's creating a, a big scandal. Uh, call it the Fatty Fiver scandal, if you like. The Bank of England are printing new five-pound notes next year. The problem is they're polymer notes. In other words, they contain traces of animal fat. So it's really, really made uh, vegans, vegetarians, certain religious groups, because apparently that animal fat is beef, and animal right, rights activists very mad. They've launched a petition uh, calling for it to be withdrawn, and over 125,000 people have signed this petition. Uh, but the, uh, the, the inventor of the technology said today that their criticism was stupid. That was his words. While this Facebook user uh, has kind of made light of the scandal, saying vegan campaigners insist new banknotes should be made of fruit and vegetable pulp, thus giving everyone their fiver day. <laughs> All right, and finally, a bit of sartorial advice, thanks to Donald Trump. Who would have guessed? <laughs> well, it's more what not to do, at least. I see you're wearing a tie, Will. So let's see. Uh, this, uh, his name is Hunter Schwartz, a, a political writer, has quite astutely noted that when Donald Trump landed in Indiana on Thursday, the wind blew his tie up over his shoulder, revealing that uh, the tail of his tie was actually scotch taped to the back of his tie. The reason for this could be that he had the length of the tie did not fit the little, uh, the little loop inside. 
Uh, so uh, it might be a deliberate choice, uh, this uh, Hunter Schwartz says, saying it, it, he is, after all, an anti-establishment president. Yeah, let me say we are not cut from the same cloth. <laughs> we are not. Okay. Diptyka Laurent with Media Watch, Kate Moody with the business. That's all for now from the newsroom. Please stay tuned to France 24.